a masonry job site. This house is being built with CMUs. CMU stands for Concrete Masonry Unit. To begin with, we mix up a mortar using sand and Portland cement. In this case, we're using one part Portland cement and three parts sand. This young man here is using a paddle mixer, which makes it much more efficient and easier on the person doing the mixing. In this case, there's a tab up on the top of the mixer that he just throws the bag into, which cuts the bag, and he can open it up and let it run in. Obviously, you can see, really, you should be wearing a mask in order to do this. By adding a little bit of water along the way, then you don't end up with a soup mix, and that is not, not as good. So he's counting out the shovels per bag of concrete mix. First of all, they'll build these corners, and once the corners are done and completed, then they'll put a line up there. And as you can see, in this over here, these guys are running to that line there from these two corners. And that, is, that assures that that wall is going to be straight and level. We start with our corners. We build our corners square and true as much as we possibly can. But one thing I want to point out is watch how he butters this block. Okay, let's watch it again in slow motion. He basically takes half of what he's got on his trowel and puts it on each side of his block. Watch it one more time. Half of it goes on one side. Half of it goes on the other. And then he's going to place the block squarely and as level as he possibly can. Once he's got that set, then he's going to use his trowel to scrape off the excess mortar and to reset it and flush and level as possible. Here the mason is adding lateral reinforcement or what is called as durawall to help with backfill because this this here is going to be backfilled dang near nine or ten feet so they have to add this uh, material in here to make it stronger so like I say he is building the corners and then other masons will be do, laying a string and laying it to the string this is not easy work this is back breaking work but it is rewarding at the end of the day. I am a, a trained mason, and you're gonna to get to lay some block in the class and get your hand at it as well. And again, he's eyeballing it down the top so that the corners line up. He's leveling it, and then he's leveling it both ways, and then he's probably gonna Yes, he's going to take his level and pull it out to line up with the rest of the wall. Concrete masonry units are sold in a nominal 8 by 16. So we're talking, with a head joint, we're talking 8 inches here. And, or excuse me, a bed joint. With a head joint, we're talking 16 inches total. So generally the joints are 3 eighths of an inch. So we add 3 eighths to this to give it a total of 8. We add 3 eighths to this to give it a total of 16. Now, this is considered an 8 inch block because it is nominally 8 inches across the surface. This is a 12 inch block. Even though both faces are identical, 8 by 16, the thickness of it dis discerns the size. So this is an 8 inch CMU. This is a 12 inch CMU. Now when you're looking up on the wall, you'll see that they, they alternate these. And this is called a running bond. So these basically line up halfway on the course below it. 
so that they interlock in each other and make it very strong. Wires added on it so that when they backfill, this gives the wall strength and it won't fall in. Also, these will also be filled with concrete and rebar will be placed down in the joints as they're filled with concrete. Here a string is being placed in between the corners and the masons are laying to the string. So one mason is going along and adding the bed joint and then this mason is buttering the block and laying it to the line. Again, he's using one trowel of mortar to do both sides of the head joint. So the up, the up and down joints are called head joints, and the the horizontal joint is called the bed joint. Yeah, he did two of them for me. Now the other mason has already completed the bed joint and he's going along and adding the head joint to the block. So the head mason there, all he has to do is pick up the block and place it in place. So he's putting it up against that string, but he's leaving a little bit of light between that string and the block so that uh, he doesn't push the string out. If you touch the string, then the next block is going to be off. It's going. It's not going to be right. So you have to kind of pay attention to that so you don't touch the string at all. And they will they will work back and forth on each one of those steps that you see over the, to the left there uh, at each course. Once they get down to the end, they'll move the line up and they'll start back at the, uh, going the other way maybe or they'll start back at the other end working in this direction again. It is very important to make sure that your block is spaced out correctly. Each block is 16 inches uh, with a head joint. So the block is 15 and 5 eighths plus a head joint of 3, 3 eighths makes it 16 inches. If you don't, watch this here. It has to go in so perfect. So it's really, really important to make sure that you get your block spaced out correctly. Now once the line is up, you don't have to spend a whole heck of a lot of time leveling and everything. You just basically work it to the line and go with that. On the back wall and this left side wall are going to be 12 inch CMU walls. The right wall will be an 8 inch CMU and then the front wall, will, the daylight wall, will be a 2 by 6 wall that has what we know as a header block. So a header block will go in and then we'll pour concrete right up to this point here. Once a 2 by, the 2 by 6 goes on to here, it covers this joint here so that all you see is the concrete that's over here. This makes a nice clean look when uh, when pouring the concrete up to it and having a wall on it. In this view, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when they're building this wall and keeping everything nice and straight. Mike is a seasoned mason. He's done it all of his life. And uh, a lot of times he doesn't work with the line because he is so good at it. So he's using his level to get everything nice and level. And then he's going to check the sides to make sure that they're straight. He's checking his plumb. And now he's make sure that all of those are perfectly straight. Another view of the guy's running the, the string line down through there. So the, the tender, which was the guy making the mud, he is uh, 
he's spooning it up or shoveling it up, we call it spooning, into those pans that you see on the scaffolding for the masons to use. Each person on a mason team has a responsibility and it's very important for that person to complete their job and stay on it. These boys showed up at eight o'clock in the morning and they had this complete wall, uh, in th oh, it was three-sided wall, had it completely done by 11.30. Mike goes out to the uh, high schools and when they do a uh, Skills USA. So blocks are made with an end similar to this for just running across the regular wall. And then we have a slot in here. This slot is used for, uh, for, for jam, door jams and for vents. On the other side, you'll notice it's nice and flat and that will give us a corner that looks nice and clean when it's all done. To keep the wall level, every once in a while they have to take and measure these corners with a builder's level so that the, all four corners are perfectly level. And then when they run the lines between them, then the whole wall will be level. A diagonal dimension has to be taken ever so often to make sure that the building stays square. 